my friends and welcome to the beautiful Arab medieval city of Fez, Morocco. Today we're in this ancient city founded in the 9th century AD to see some beautiful sights, to see some amazing Arab culture, to see what they call the Athens of Africa, the Mecca of the West, one of the most amazingly preserved ancient cities that you can find in the Arab world. We're exploring it today. We're looking at food, we're looking at culture, we're looking at history. We're looking at the beauty of Fez. Let's go. We're starting our day in Fez at Bab Rsif, which is kind of a square and one of the southern gates of the ancient city of Fez. This beautiful blue gate, people coming, people going. Fez is a city of 9,000 streets in two major medinas that have been built basically for the last thousand years. People have been trading, coming and going, doing mercantile activities and all of these things in this city for, I mean, for basically forever. So we're headed this way. We're going into the old market. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the old, a little bit about the new and everything in between super excited this is like a top travel list item for me fez first and foremost is a city of traders it's really in the central highlands of morocco so we're about a couple hundred kilometers from tangier the northern coast the door to africa we're close to the capital city rabat just about like two hours drive to the south we're about 300 kilometers from marrakesh the uh, the ancient capital of morocco and this was also a starting point for many Sahara voyages. So even last night I was in a bar and one of the owners said that he, every year, 52 days out of the year, would walk from Fez all the way to Timbuktu through the Sahara Desert. He's a Berber person. It was phenomenal. So this is a staging ground for all of the culture, all of the trade, all of the movement of people through Morocco, which is why this is such a vibrant mercantile place and why there is so much going on here. So we're gonna see some ancient stuff. Let's get in there. To start us off, I'm standing in front of one of the oldest madrasas here in the old city of Fez. A madrasa is a place of Islamic learning. This was built in the 13th century. And here we also have a kind of metal working area. But here, here's the beautiful madrasa in something called Place Siphon. So Fez became a center of Islamic learning and Islamic trade over the centuries from the 800s when it was built to about the 1200s it was an up-and-coming Middle Eastern Arab city. It was uh, mostly populated with people coming from Tunisia, from the east, and from the southern part of Spain in the north. So people were coming here, people were trading, people were doing different things here, but it wasn't really until the 13th, 14th century during this kind of Islamic enlightenment that Fez blew up as this city of trade, of culture, of learning. And uh, here in the city, there's one of the oldest universities that you can find anywhere in the world, uh, built in the, in the 900s, I believe. So we're going to go check this out over here. But this is a city full of madrasas and full of Islamic teachers, Islamic learning, and it is still one of the more, let's call it, conservative cities in Morocco. So this is kind of that old tradition. So it looks old, it feels old, the people have that old school vibe, and it's really old world. It's, it's amazing that we're only about an hour away from, let's say, southern Spain and Portugal, but it feels like a completely different planet. It's really something just incredible. I was trying to take you guys to the mosque, but because it's prayer hour, it's, uh, it's closed, so I'm gonna come back. So now we're gonna head to the tannery, but everything here is so wildly confusing. These streets, ooh, street donkey. These streets are incredibly complicated. 9,000 interweaving streets, not really any, uh, any good street signs, and the GPS in here doesn't work very well, so you'll see tons of tourists with their phone, like with Google Maps open, aggressively trying to find where they're going. And you just end up in these dark kind of corners away from what you're looking for. And maybe you find it, maybe you don't find it. It's really hard to say, but it's crazy how you can go from a place with a bunch of people and then you have all these 
little lives happening in each one of these corners. Really cool. For me, this this is all about like these little vignettes, these little windows into people's lives. Everywhere you walk, you find little stores filled with vendors selling things. Some open, some closed. Some friendly, some not so friendly. It's very interesting. <laughs> so now we're at our next station, which is the tannery. It has a very strong smell. And so we've got uh, this mint here to protect our nose. And here's what it looks like. So this is the cleaning process. Okay. We use limestone and pigeon poop. Limestone and pigeon poop. That's what you're smelling now, like natural ammonia. Absolutely, absolutely. To soft the leather and to take the hair from the skin. Okay. And from the other side, they make the colors. Okay. Dye. Come to see. The smell is really aggressive, I will tell you. How many years is this? How many years have they Over been? Over 600 years. 600 years. It's the biggest and the largest tanneries in North Africa. Okay. It's called Showara Tanneries. Beautiful. And how, how, much, uh, how much leather do they make here? You I know? don't know exactly how much. A lot. Okay. A Over lot. 5,000 skin a week. Okay. Because they work by week. Friday is the day off. Sure. Yeah. Okay. 5,000 skins a week. And over. Over 5,000. Yes. Wow. Look at that. We use skin from cow, from goat, and lamb. This is lamb. This one is lamb here. Yes. Very soft leather. Ah, oh, okay. We okay. use for jacket, for gloves. Okay. And the cow, the leather more thicker, like the one here. The big ones hanging. Yeah, the big this ones is hanging all here. Cow. Okay. You see the yellow ones in the corner? Yeah. This is the tradition color for the slippers in fast. Okay, okay, they okay. Use curcuma and uh -huh. palm grenade. Okay. Wow, yes. curcuma and, and pomegranate. Yes. Okay. Okay. So they use a uh, natural dyes. What is curcuma in, in it's English? Like the one used for cooking. No, I know. I am trying to think of the name. Yeah. Turmeric. Turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric. Turmeric. Exactly. Not saffron. Not saffron. To no. To be honest, that would be that would be. Uh, this is saffron. No, that yes. would be too way too expensive. Yes. And you're from here in Fez? Yes, I born here. Okay. Have you worked down there or no? Never. Only Never. in the factory here. Only in the factory. Yes. Okay. And what do you guys make? Was just like leather bags make and it stuff? Bags, shoes, jacket, okay. belt, everything. Okay. Yes. Why also is so with those things by order? Okay. You know? Why is leather so famous here? Just... Because this house very famous for leather, my friend. Okay. The leather from here, no smell, no change the color after. Right. Because they treat it with natural pigments and natural way. You okay. know, no chrome, no acid. Sure. They keep the tradition. Sure, That's sure, sure. That's why they still use pigeon droppings. Okay. This is like natural ammonia. Do they have like a pigeon house No. Here? No, they where are they? They come from the mansions. They have farmers of pigeons. Okay. And the people, they collect it. Okay. Every man, they come here and they sell to the works. Okay. So now we've got a close up of the drums here. So in each drum, there's pigeon shit and yeah. limestone. And limestone, and then they put the they put there. the leather in there for one week. After the limestone, okay. The, the smell off and the rest of the hair. Okay. The wheel, like washing machine. Oh, they put they put the leather yes. in there. They spin yes. it. Look at the window. Yeah. There's okay. Small okay. Window in the middle. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Uh -huh. So, whew, it smells. Yeah. That's a tough smell right there. Here it smells better, my friend. Yes. And then look, look, you can get a nice yellow leather. So this is the leather from here. Yes. It's beautiful. From here. This wow. is lamb skin. Lambskin shirt. Very, very soft. If you need a lambskin shirt. Beautiful. The traditional Moroccan poof. Yeah. Okay. I Just like it. it. Beautiful. Look at that. You stuffed, um, as I told you, just with old clothes. Old cuts clothes. And wool, okay. Anything we don't use. Right, right, right. This place is really like another world. It's so. Old so school. Beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. Gorgeous. So gorgeous. It's really phenomenal. The best part is that people still dress in traditional clothing and they still do traditional handicrafts and they still do all of these things that they've been doing for the last thousand years. It's incredible. Salam alaikum. People also are super friendly. Of course, they're trying to sell you stuff. They're, you know, decently aggressive here, but not, not too much. I thought it would be worse, honestly. But the best part about this 
place is just all these little streets. It's just, you never know what you'll find. Salam alaikum. See the beautiful handicrafts that they've got on the walls here. And then you just find a random door to a random place with beautiful tile work and the woodwork, the old locks. And here the stucco work. It's incredible. Salam alaikum. All right, we're going adventurizing now. Found this amazing, look at this. So the cool part about the street signs you'll find here is they have it written in traditional Arabic, which is maybe the Darija, the local Arabic script. This is actually the Berber language, which super beautiful, very interesting. We're gonna do a whole video about the Berbers. And Deb Rami, written for us foreigners. But look at this. I mean, they literally, so I don't know if you guys can really capture this, but you've got a door here and then right here, I mean, we're talking like, like it's it's this wide. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Why would you build something like this? It's oddly claustrophobic. I mean, you could live here at number one. And then, I mean, oh man, this is sketchy. I am not a big fan of caves, but this is unreal. I can't even believe this. And you can see this sliver of light here. And then it just goes. You can go this way. Strange. Wow. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> wow. C'est très, uh, très, wow, petit, huh? Super petit. Wow. Incredible. Okay. Bonne journée. Yeah. Wow. And a nice lady living in this very narrow thing. Wow, oh my God, this is so claustrophobic. I gotta get out of here. Wild. So when you think of Fez, you think of market culture. And the reason for that is that this is a place of trans-Saharan trade. So all of these goods making its way from east to west, west to east, and also from Europe down to sub-Saharan Africa came through Fez. This was a place where lots of people stopped along their way through various crazy journeys on camelback through the Sahara Desert and then um, to the various empires throughout history. So one of the most important empires was the Mali Empire or also called the Songhai Empire of Mansa Musa. And uh, Fez during this time period, 12, 1300s, was at its height, its zenith. And it became a place where there was so much money and so much capital and so much people moving through this area that uh, it just had to grow to, to become such a vibrant trade hub. And you just get beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scenes like this that still exist in today's modern time. I'm not often blown away by destinations, but I mean, you got this old, beautiful wooden facade. I mean, the, the handicraft work here in the city, the city of artisans, it's really unbelievable. And all of this colored woodwork, wow. And it's all so cacophonously, chaotically put together, so you don't even, it just pops out of nowhere. You have no expectations, and then boom, it hits you. It's, I've just paid 20 dirham, which is like two euros to enter one of the ancient madrasas, these houses of learn Islamic learning here in, in Fez. And away from the chaos of the little streets, you find this courtyard that is just stunning. a small, secluded area of peace among an otherwise extremely chaotic city. They let you also come into the top of the madrasa here, and you get this beautiful little pigeonhole view of the courtyard with the fountain, all of the woodwork. I mean, everything is so extremely intricate. I love that sort of mosaic style, the tile, everything about this art I just love. And uh, theoretically, I'm not sure, but there are all of these small rooms and what typically happens within a madrasa is it's a place where you study and learn. 
And so these could have been rooms that people lived in. So could you imagine this being your little tiled room? Maybe you have a small bed here. That would be a desk for learning. The Islamic scripture, many people were known to be able to recite the Quran from just pure memory. So you imagine people from all over the Arab world would come to Fez to learn, to study, to share the, uh, the gospel of the Quran. And they did it in some of the most beautiful places you could find on the planet. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head to the food side of the market, which I no idea where it is. It could literally be anywhere. And we're gonna eat some local fasi fez food. So, especially street food. They have really good street food in this market. I'm very impressed. And the thing is, it's not really a market. It's a city. It's a city market. It just, there is not like the market area. There's just people living, working, selling, vending stuff everywhere. It's a nonstop affair. The only place I've been like this in the world is the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. But because it's very, very touristy, it's changed a lot. Whereas here, it seems like it is touristy, but it's also incredibly not super, super local. Oh, I see something amazing. Wow. Things seem to pop up seemingly nowhere, just out of just out of thin air. You're just walking, you're just captured by something. So again, beautiful, beautiful entrance to what I believe is a mosque because they have a minaret up here. And here you can see the traditional Moroccan dress. I think they call this a jidda or jibba, and it goes all the way down. And you can see people all over the city still dressing like this, especially in the more conservative regions. If you go to the more, of course, like. Uh, non-conservative areas it's really challenging to find people who are wearing stuff like this but probably in this city you know 30 40 percent of the men definitely wearing this stuff and look at this beautiful wood wow this whole video is just going to be me saying wow because it's just i don't really know how to capture this i don't know how anyone could do a good job capturing this you've just got to come you've got to get over here to fez i think that's the main point Perfect. So the first thing we're going to try here is something called bisara, which is a soup made out of fava beans and olive oil. You serve it up with a little bit of chili, merci, serve it up with a little bit of cumin. You've got this nice layer of olive oil here on the top. This is like the breakfast of champions. You'll see dudes all over the city with a big pot of bisara with the, uh, the local crusty kind of like nice bread. It's got a little bit of flour on the outside, so it gives it some texture, and it's it's good. It's super good. Honestly, I'm a big, big fan of this. So let's uh, let's give it a shot. We go for a little, little cumin on the top there. Boom. Cumin is always good. Go for a little chili. Bow, bow, <coughs> and we're ready. So the bisada, you take the bread, a little dip. It's nice. Got to soak up all that oil, and you just go for it. Mmm. Delicious. A little garlicky, a little beany. The olive oil in this country is amazing, so you can really taste the floral kind of aspect of the oil. Apparently you can buy a liter of fresh olive oil, like fresh pressed oil for like 40 Ds, which is like less than five euros. A really, really good deal. And it makes everything taste so much better. So I'm gonna finish this up and we'll move on to our next food. Pisada. I've been waiting for this very Moroccan photo, but um, these are tagines. Tagines are the traditional cooking vessels of Morocco. They cook everything in here. It's like a slow cooker kind of situation. You stack everything in there, a little bit of olive oil, you know, uh, some, some protein, some vegetables, definitely potatoes. And you just sit it like all day over some sort of fire. And then when you're ready to go, it is ready for you. So stack of tagines, they're beautiful. They uh, conduct with the heat, with the, the metal part. 
and they're made out of clay typically. So. You turn off one of the main streets here, the kind of touristy streets, and you can find a market that's been selling the things that they've been doing here for like a thousand years. Like nothing's changed. They still use the scales that, uh, you know, the manual scales. They've got the fish market, people buying, people selling, all this different stuff. The beautiful fish. All kinds of people come through here through the ancient walls, the ancient streets. And you can find amazing examples of the local produce, the way it's always been sold. Salam alaikum. Vendors selling, vendors selling in the same place for a thousand years. Maybe the son of a 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 son selling the fish in the same way that his father sold it. It's just incredible. You're confronted with the sights, the sounds, the smells of an old market culture. Alright, so I've stopped down on this little corner and I found this guy making just fresh kefta, which is a kebab. Capital Barbecue. Capital Barbecue. Okay. This is the whole restaurant. That's it. It's the whole Asia. Asia. Antique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Look at that. Is it beef or lamb? Beef. Beef. Yes. If you ever want to have a cultural experience, I think this is it. Just, uh, just uh, find a little hole in the wall spot. Get some kefta. They've got here. They've got some spices in case you want it. Got the uh, got some prayers in the background. Amazing. Can't believe this place exists. I'm just blown away. My friend over here has got me a kefta sandwich. Kefta you can find everywhere in uh, the Middle Eastern world. It's just spiced lamb or spiced beef on a kebab grilled up. Oh, it smells, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells absolutely fantastic. The grill smell is just completely, this, I mean this whole room is just, this is the whole thing. It's the whole restaurant, so cheers, let's go to shop. Oh. Mm. It's literally just beef and bread. It's so just tender, delicious, spicy. It's got a little bit of everything. You don't even need a sauce, it's so good. Whew. It's gonna be a dangerous episode, guys. All right, we've got the traditional fry guys. So we've got some liver, we've got some eggplant, so, uh, sardine, and uh, on sardine. Okay. Ah, do it, yeah? Oh, it's okay. It's perfect. The perfect sampler for it. Merci beaucoup. Merci. No, it's okay. We ducked into the little another hole in the wall. So we've got we've got the eggplant, we've got one sardine, we've got the fried fried liver, the foie, as they say. So let's give it a shot. The fried food here in Morocco is very famous. Mm. Oh, it's super good. I like how they do liver in this country. It's really tender. You can tell people who understand liver by how well they cook it. So like in the U.S., it's like the liver and onions thing. Not good. Here light battery and uh, the inside nice and tender not too livery mm. okay so now we've got some eating done now i'm on a mission to meet one of my good friend of a friend he's coming through i'm gonna meet him at the blue gate so you just have to go through the smoky alleyways of fez deep, 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 to find what you're looking for will i find it you can get lost in here forever. I might never get out. Will I find him? We'll see. 
It's really hard to capture how overwhelming this place is, but try it. Ooh. There's just people everywhere. It's just non-stop. And there's probably like 10,000 stalls. Oh, I was on the street. I remember this. This is one of my favorite things that I've seen is because it's so confusing here, because they have these 9,000 streets, you have all these signs for the various restaurants, Riyadh's you can stay at. Riyadh is like one of those hotels with a courtyard. Maybe you want to go to some sort of cooking class at Dar Atajali. It's really crazy. It's really not helpful because honestly, if you don't know where you're going and you have no GPS, I have no idea how you could possibly get around here. But people have been doing it for thousands of years. Thank you. Welcome thank you. Thank you. Welcome thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super duper. Super duper. Super duper. The butchers here in Fez are no joke. This is one of the gnarlier things that I've probably seen. A bunch of dripping lamb heads, sheep heads, and everything else you might need. Along with the stomachs hanging. Oh, what? Bro, that's a camel head. Something. Oh man, that's gnarly. I didn't think I was gonna see a severed camel head in the market, but welcome to Morocco. Now I'm on a little rooftop now, and the view from up here, you can see the, the chaos. You can see this is the, the Blue Gate, one of the most famous in the city. You've got all these buildings on top of each other, and the market just goes in. You can see the beautiful old uh, minarets, the little rooftop cafes. Some sort of old castle. I mean, this man just fixing a top of a thing. Unbelievable. I haven't been blown away like this since I was in Uzbekistan. And this is like almost more intense in a weird way. Uzbekistan was like more relaxed. This is like, this is the real stuff. Now we're gonna meet our Mahomie right here. Let's find him. Standing here at the gates of the Medina is a surreal experience as this is the best preserved medieval Arab city anywhere in the world. Here you can see the large fortifications and embankments that they've built to protect the, the old royal city of what used to be Morocco's capital for a couple hundred years. Each city has something called a bab. A bab is a, is a gate, an opening to the, to the city and the fortresses were incredibly important as this was, uh, as I said, an important trans-Saharan trading post. You can think of many, uh, many empires coming through here and trying to take over such an important economic city, an economic trading point through the medieval age. Fez did lose its glimmer a little bit after the 1600s as a lot of the trade was moved to the new capital city, which was Marrakesh in the south. It was a little bit more advantageous position as here is high in the mountains and in, uh, in Marrakesh, it's a little bit more low, a little bit closer to the south, has a better connection to the Sahara. So here it is, it still stands. And the beautiful part about it is it's kind of fallen apart. It's really like decrepit in a weird way, but it's sort of beautiful that it's just people living in this ancient life, in this ancient world, and that it's still existing the way that it's existed for thousands of like, you know, nearly a thousand years. I mean, there's nothing more beautiful than that. When I go to ruins and other places and it's so pristine and kept and you know the UNESCO heritage site's not being used anymore, we're missing a lot of the culture, but you can see here people are just operating as they normally would, you know, buying imported bananas and local oranges, walking, trading, yelling, selling knockoff shoes, and it's so vibrant and you can really you can really feel it. Still found me again, man, you found me again. Alright, so we've teamed up with a local now. It's Yusuf. 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 Okay. Matter. He's an American. He's an American language center teacher. Correct. And he's starting his own center. And he's a man of the people. Uh, and that's what's important. Thank you. Yes. And he's well dressed. Hello, Look at how well dressed you are. Am I? Absolutely. And yeah. <laughs> thank You're you. Much well, much better dressed than I am. So. <laughs> so this is a favorite of yours. Ooh, this is a very good. We're gonna find out in a bit. All right, dude. All right. So like. Uh, Why is this your favorite? It's just in there. Just, yeah. All right. I'll cut out of you there. 
Good for your digestive system? Yep. All right. Is this like your favorite fruit? One of them. One of them. Yeah. So now Yusuf is taking us through the the real feds, the not touristy Medina, where it's just streets, local people, local families. Actual, authentic. Actual, authentic experience, right? Yeah, I hope so. So tell us what's going on here. So we're getting um, camel meat, sheep head meat, and uh, that's it. That's it. The camel meat makes you uh, horny, he said. Nice. <laughs> is he right? So is he Medically speaking? <laughs> no. Is he, is he horny all the time over <laughs> there? <laughs> Can be. This is camel. Oh, yeah. This is uh, beef. Not, not beef, but head. You know, like the sheep head of sheep. Beef. But it's really like light than the meat. Yeah, yeah. It tastes like fat too. Is it the camel like hump? I don't know. Don't, don't die on you. Don't die on me. All right, to camel, camel hump. Cheers. Cheers to the camel hump. Cheers bro. to the camel. All right, let's see. All right. Tastes just like animal fat. Basically. It's like more firm. Yeah, more it firm animal fat. Texture, but texture it has texture. Meat. It has some texture. Yeah. yeah. See, like, does, does this remind you of your childhood? Uh, yeah. It kind of reminds me of like the like tripe. A little bit. Have you had tripe before? No. No. It's like a, what is it? Sheep stomach. Like the stomach of a sheep or a cow or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tripe. Weird. Tripe. We have it in Morocco too. Yeah, yeah. It's one of my favorite dishes. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Interesting. All right. So now we're going for some uh, some head of sheep. Wow. Look at that. Got a little bit of everything there. Mm -hmm. mm. Super good. Super good tender. Meat. Super tender, exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. The real Morocco. Is it? The real Morocco. You see on it? Is that as real as it gets? It's about as real as it gets, dude. Camel hump? Yep. Shui, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This has been like the most Moroccan experience I think you could ever have. Like this guy doing his thing. We had a whole table full of people speaking just straight Derija. And the thing is he gave me like so much camel hump. Like how much how much camel hump can one man eat? Not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. That's a lot of that was like that was like a, a half kilo of hump. Probably yes. Yeah. So then Not he more. thinks I didn't. He, then he thinks I didn't like it because I didn't eat that much. And now he's giving me another plate of food. We've got some beef. We've got some chicken. And we have this interesting like vermicelli noodle situation. I didn't even These ask people for it. He didn't even ask for it. It was just like, and it's free. Technically, you just wanted it. Like, if you're not gonna be this, you're not gonna be this. You're just making something that. But now I have to eat it because if I don't eat it, then I've been rude. So. No, it's not. No, you gotta eat it, bro. No, you don't have to. <laughs> we'll try it. We'll try it. Okay. We'll try a little bit. He's giving you some chicken. You gonna try some chicken too? Hmm. What was the word? Ladid. 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 So with the sun setting and atop a royal Riyadh palace. I will say thank you for watching. We're done here in Fez. One of the most crazy cities I've ever seen. Like hands down, I'm really blown away. I'm not often blown away, blown away. You've done it Fez. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We've got uh, some tour of Meknes, a beautiful city, just a bit west of here tomorrow. And uh, then we're back to Tangier to make more interesting Moroccan related videos.